Now let's talk about the relationship between uh, behavioral strategies and outcome. It's easier than mixed strategies, uh, as you will see. So take any uh, mixed strategy profile. Remember, it's coming from this uh, uh, big fat B set. And then we define the outcome function OB uh, Z, which basically denotes the probability of the history Z occurring uh, after the strategy profile or if the players uh, play according to the uh, behavioral strategy profile B, uh, beta, I'm sorry. So uh, for any uh, terminal history Z, which is element of Z, and remember we denote the terminal uh, histories as a sequence A sub small k, k from 1 to capital K, all right? So k can be uh, finite in, in, in or, and or infinite. Um, so the O beta Z for that particular history, the uh, terminal history, is defined by the following. We basically multiply uh, a you know, bunch of probabilities, actually uh, uh, k, a, k, k many probabilities. So starting from L equals zero to K minus one, what we create or what we find is the beta of PZL, which basically is the mixed strategy of player uh, ZL, player who moves after history ZL. So what is ZL, by the way? It's the truncation of uh, this history Z, all right? Meaning uh, just look at the first L period of this history, ignore the remaining K minus L actions. Just look at the first L actions. So after, so this history, this sub history is Z sub L. So who is the player moving after that history? Well, so therefore I am looking at the uh, behavioral strategy of that player uh, of playing what? Playing the action uh, A, which is supposed to be played in this history Z. So A L plus one, all right? Uh, given that uh, the, the, the history we're talking about is uh, truncated history Z L, all right? And well, so basically what happens is that if we have a history where here player something, player one, player two, player one again, maybe player three, well, history, I don't know. It's not sort of a string, but anyway. So if these are the, the amount, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, timings of the actions in this history, and then th th this is the end. So this is the K. Uh, well, what happens is this is A1, this is A2, A3, A4, A5, and, and this is AK. So what we are looking for is uh, the, here, uh, whoever was playing, let's say it was player one, what was, uh, according to his um, behavioral strategy, what was the likelihood of him playing A1? Multiply what was, so who, who was playing here? Player two, let's say. So what was him, uh, what was the likelihood of him playing A2 after this history, meaning A1 is realized? Multiply that as well. And then look at the third player. I mean, the, the player who is moving the third. Who is this? Player one, two, doesn't matter. But what was his likelihood of playing A3 after that history? All right. So remember, all those probabilities are independent. And so we multiply all of them. So basically, we multiply all those probabilities of actions occurring and hence find the likelihood of history. Uh, that's it. So it's pretty straightforward. Well, the notation could be a bit complicated, but I'll talk about an example. I believe it is going to make things perfectly clear. And then the expected utility of each player R is very simple. I basically uh, know, I, I basically calculate the likelihood of each those payoff vectors occurring, uh, which is OBZ, and then multiply those probabilities with the payoffs player will achieve, and then add them up. So this is the expected payoff. Once again, I also denote the expected payoff sometimes, well, I mean, this is capital U, uh, but later I will always use small u to denote von Neumann Morgenstern utility or the expected utility, just, uh, you know, to get rid of extra complications in notations, all right? So that's it. If we sort of reconsider the example we were talking about since the beginning, 
So let's consider this behavioral strategy profile, all right? So after the initial history, meaning at the first point, player one is supposed to play L with 0.8 probability. Well, the nice thing about behavioral strategy is you can put those probabilities next to each action, unlike the mixed strategies, because the mixed strategies are a mixture of uh, the contingency plans, right? All right, so but we know that player one is going to play this 0.8 probability. Well, maybe, you know what? The best is to use a different color. There you go. So he's going to play with 0.8 probability L and therefore 0.2 probability R, right? Because he has only two available actions. Well, in his first info set, he's playing B with probability one. All right, meaning he's going to play B, but not F. So one probability, zero probability. And then in his third info set, he's going to play C with probability one. So he's going to play C with one probability, D with zero probability. All right, what else? Player two. Player two is going to play X uh, if player, so at this decision node, so uh, with probability one. All right, so that means she's going to play Z, Y with probability zero. And uh, she is playing W after R with probability 0.4 and then Z with probability 0.6 because there are only two available actions and they their probabilities must add up to one. This is what probability distribution means, right? So then uh, it's simple. You just multiply those probabilities all the way from the initial node to the uh, payoff, uh, meaning end of the history. So here, for example, what is the likelihood of LXB, oops, sorry. Well, it's simple, 0.8 times one times one. Um, there you go, 0.8 times one times one. So it's just 0.8. What about QBLXF? Well, LXF, 0.8, one times one times zero. All right, so 0.8 times one times zero. So it's zero, all right? Uh, LYB, LYB, uh, 0.8 times 0 times 1, 0. LYF, 0.8 times 0 times 0, 0. Okay? Well, what about RWC? RWC. So 0 0.2 times 0 0.4, 0 0.08 times 1, 0 0.08. All right? So this is nothing but 0 0.2 times 0 0.4 times 1. Well, what about RWD, RWD? Well, it's zero because of this. Or RZD, RZD. Again, it's zero because of this, so zero. And then finally, RZC, RZC. 0 0.2 times 0 0.6 times one. 0 0.2 times 0 0.6 times one. So it's one point, uh, I'm sorry, 0 0.12. By the way, if you, I mean, you must be careful because these are, all potential uh, uh, histories, uh, the, the probability distribution, this QB, all right, Z, Z in set Z, has to add up to one, right? Because otherwise, I mean, this is a probability distribution, so it has to add up to one. If it is not, well, trust me, you're making something wrong, so be careful about it. Well, by the way, if you remember, uh, the mixed strategy we used uh, in the previous episode, well, we had, we, we got exactly the same probabilities, right? There are basically three outcomes, we, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, three terminal histories with a positive probability. The first one is LXB, LXB, so this payoff. The second one is RWC, RWC, this payoff. And then the third one is RZC, uh, this payoff. So, and the probabilities are exactly the same. So if you calculate the expected utility of player one under beta, and expected utility of player two under beta, you're gonna get exactly the same number. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was uh, 3.44. Uh, let me check. Uh, was it? Yes. And then the second player was 2.44, all right? Well, another thing, I did not pick this behavioral strategy randomly. Once again, if you look at the probability distribution over those terminal histories, uh, you know, those numbers, 
and, and you know, for which history those numbers uh, correspond to? Well, the mixed strategy I gave you as an example and this behavioral strategy are outcome equivalent, meaning they lead to the same probability distribution over terminal histories. What does that mean? That means whether you work on a mixed strategy or behavioral strategy doesn't matter. In fact, this is a theorem we haven't proved yet, but we will later. Uh, for every mixed strategy, there is an outcome equivalent behavioral strategy and vice versa, meaning for every behavioral strategy, there is an outcome equivalent mixed strategy. So therefore, if you find Nash equilibrium or subgame perfect Nash equilibrium or you know, whatever equilibrium you, you, notion you use, whether you calculate those equilibrium under mixed strategies or with mixed strategies or with uh, behavioral strategies doesn't matter because for every mixed strategy equilibrium, you're going to have a behavioral strategy equilibrium that are outcome equivalent, meaning they, they lead to the same outcome. Okay?